The book itself is just a pound of paper, but the significance in that pound of paper is quite amazing. Reading in any form is a very important activity. It's a human activity. One can find the physical, tactile beauty of holding an object and reading and getting your information from it. But still the cornerstone of it is the transfer of information from one human being to another. Someone's imaginative ideas from one person to another. So in whatever form we take part in that process, it's all good. My name is Barbara Ellis, and I'm the owner of the Edmonton Bookstore in Edmonton, Alberta. I grew up in a small town in Saskatchewan. The population, I think, is still about the same, 2,500 people. My dad was a, quite a good pianist, although he had very little training. He loved music, and he played for all of us as children. So we grew up with music in the house. It seemed a natural fit to continue that once I'd finished high school, and I left to go to Edmonton, where I got a master's degree in music and became active as a teacher. I can't say I ever envisioned myself as a bookstore owner, or let alone a business owner, because my life is so connected to music as a young person. I've always had a love of reading. My parents were very interested in us learning the things one can from reading. And I still have a vivid memory of both my parents reading to us, particularly my father would make up stories. My parents had a library of, unfortunately, Reader's Digest condensed books, which I didn't realize were actually not the entire book that I was reading. So once I left home, I had a lot of rereading to do to get the full picture of the books that I'd read in my childhood. Starting work at the bookstore is a little bit of a miraculous story for me. I had been out of the country living in Germany for a decade. I had returned to Edmonton with my two sons in 1985, ready to make a new start. Of course, with my background and experience, I assumed that that new start would be in music. One of my friends happened to be reading a crossword puzzle, and she saw a teeny ad for a bookstore manager on the university campus. I remember going there early in the morning to drop the resume off, and I had my two sons in the car, ran in to hand off my resume, which I put in the hands of the bookstore owner at the time, and we looked at each other, and there was a brief moment of epiphany, and I knew at that moment that I had the job. The first impression of the bookstore was not necessarily terribly positive. The dust bunnies were almost as big as the books, it was extremely small. It was just a little niche bookstore inside a student mall. So there were businesses on the main floor and there were student residences above. So it was a very lively place with lots of action, lots of activity, people coming and going. And in that way, it was a very inspiring place to start work in Canada again, because I was surrounded by a wonderful community. I was required to do a lot of extra work outside of the normal hours. I believe we were open at that time from 9.30 to 5.30 during the day, with no lunch break, I might add. The downside of that for me was that I had very little time with my own family at home. As a single parent, I would raise to get breakfast ready, lunches made, my children off to school. The owner of the bookstore didn't allow me to park my car at the bookstore, so I was forced to ride my bike after sending my kids to school. In the evening, of course, I would do the same thing in reverse. Oftentimes, I was shopping for food at 11 in the evening. But it only took the first day of working at the bookstore for me to fall in love with the business. It happened almost instantly. I didn't even think about what the future was because every day was so exciting in itself. That was what made my life very joyful. I would say it was equal measures, absolutely thrilled and excited and terrified. That was a, a, an amount of money way beyond my means at the time. I basically begged for money. I had a tremendous amount of support from family and from friends, and I was absolutely thrilled at the response. In one year, I recall, I bought the bookstore and I bought a house. I regard that as a minor miracle. 
When I took over ownership of the bookstore, I was faced with all the challenges of running a business, learning how to choose and hire employees, having the financial background to be able to buy collections. And there were some very challenging times when there was simply no money available. I can remember paying my employees with my credit card. But there was also a great sense of freedom with that, that I had many more choices now, and I could take the bookstore into a direction that I wanted to. The idea that this was my business and that I could do what I wanted with it was a very thrilling challenge for me. I do believe that my approach to life is due in part to my parents. They were both very happy, positive people. My mother had a tremendous survival ability. She worked in wartime in various capacities, which was unusual for a single woman at that time. And my father, who was in the RAF, became a prisoner of war in 1940 and lived through that experience for three years. And his spirit, believing that he would survive it and he would come home again, is somehow instilled in all of his children. In the course of my career, I've moved the bookstore four times, which is uh, an amazing feat, mainly supported by my friends and, and willing volunteers. The assistant manager and myself, we were looking at our list of customers thinking, who can we coerce for no money to come and move thousands of books? Russell Wood was a lover of H.G. Wells, and he would come into the bookstore frequently, but a very quiet person. So we didn't really introduce ourselves or get to know his name right away. But we had him under a file saying, that H.G. Wells guy. So when it came time to move the bookstore, I'm scrambling to find people to help. I said, let's call that Wells guy. I'm sure he'll help us. Russell came that day, rolled up his sleeves, started working, and he never stopped. Raymond Dirtle, who was a retired employee of Air Canada and a regular customer at the bookstore, came when I moved the bookstore on my own for the first time and I still remember vividly him coming through the front door, dropping his backpack, and just starting to help with the moving of the books. He worked for me for about 15 years and would come through thick and thin to do whatever I needed to be done in the bookstore, from scraping sidewalks to washing floors to dusting books. He was always there for me, becoming a, a local fixture, shall we say the bookstore mascot. I visited him recently in uh, the senior's home where he's staying in Saskatchewan. He said that those 15 years were the happiest years of his life. One of the biggest enemies of a bookshop is water. And especially if you happen to be working on your own, as it happened to me on one weekend, when there was a sudden flash flood generated by an enormous rainstorm. So the water flowed over the sewer line into the back door of the bookstore, where it made a nice little route down into the basement, which was, uh, of course, open to the public. Water was coming in at such a rate that it was actually gushing through the walls, and it reached a height of about a half a foot in the basement. And I had one customer in the store, and I said, I'm going to buy you new shoes and new pants, but I need you to help me now. And so I took him to the basement, and he and I spent the next couple of hours bailing water from the basement into the basement toilet. That was the only way to remove it until we could get some help from the plumbers. It was just fortunate that someone was there to help me at all. So he did get his new pair of shoes. He got many free books in the future for his agreement to put himself at risk for the safety of the bookstore. Even if you have a special thing that you're looking for or a category in which you're most interested, there is a serendipity of, oh, what's that book on the shelf just to the left of me? Or I never checked out what was in the basement. For me, the unexpected that happens in a physical bookstore and the kind of community that it develops is a very important aspect of book selling in general. There are many creative aspects to the book which make it a unique item and a, almost an, an artistic artifact on its own. First of all, there is the physical aspect of the book. How is it bound? How is it illustrated? What kind of typeface has been chosen? 
it's a very tactile and physically comforting way to transfer that information. I think there is a charm to a book that's been pre-owned. If it, the book is still in good condition, you often find maybe little pencil notes in the margin from what the person found interesting to them in the book. All of us have a deep attachment to our books because they represent us and they represent our interests. And of course, they assume a value much higher than the actual book itself. So when you put these things together and you bring them in your cardboard box to the desk and, and you ask someone to value them for you and pay you for them, you already have a very personal attachment. As a buyer of books, we're looking for specific qualities that they might have. Is this book in an unusual binding? Is the binding by a binder that we know and has a reputation? Is it a book that is in its first edition? Is it a book that's signed by its author? An experience I had looking at a large library, the man himself was rather abrupt and not very pleasant to deal with. And I thought, well, maybe he's grieving his wife. And at the end of it all, he said, oh, please just take them all away. I just don't want to have them in my house anymore. Just take them away. And one of the books in the collection was a very nondescript English poets of the last 200 years. And it's something that a person wouldn't gravitate to necessarily if you were looking at a collection of books. And when I opened it, the inside of the book had been cut out to fit a bottle of scotch. So I thought, okay, I get the picture. This woman went down to her library frequently, a little quiet time, communing with her books and having a sip of whiskey. In the early 90s, we were, I think, the first bookstore in Evans to put our stock on the internet. I'm very hopeful about the future of bookstores. If they are able to diversify, which means to place their inventory on online services, that aspect of our business has become increasingly important. The younger generation in particular is used to collecting their information, collecting their objects, doing all their shopping online. However, I do feel that the heart of the book business really remains in having a physically open shop where people can come and mingle, they can ask for recommendations, we can mentor young readers in the importance of building a collection. All those things can only happen when you're physically present in a shop that sells books. For me, the bookstore has always been about the people. The idea of going to work every day not knowing what the pattern of the day will be, who will come and go, what books you might see, what interactions you might have with the people that come through the door. It's always very, very changeable and very inspiring every day. It's still amazing to me that I fell in backwards to a job that I've loved for the rest of my life.